Salutations crustaceans, I'm Lobster, and today we're taking an in-depth look at my Dingwall NG3 that's been heavily modified by me. Let's check it out. This is my Dingwall Combustion Series NG3, the Nolly Get Good Signature. I love this bass, but I've modified the heck out of it with a new preamp, a full shielding job, a passive tone control, and a six-way rotary switch replacing the four-way, giving me two more pickup options, which are really cool, and I'll go over those. Hi. Mwah. Before I go over the electronics and the modifications that I did, let's go over the basic specs of the NG3 first. The body, finished in this gorgeous matte gold, is an alder body, and that is paired to a multi-scale maple neck. We have a 37 to 34 inch scale multi-scale fingerboard here, and this has quite the B string. Dingwall has a reputation for delivering the goods when it comes to a solid B, and they deserve that reputation because this thing definitely kicks. The strings each have their own individual bridge saddle units, and up at the headstock we have Hipshot Ultralight Tuners. Now let's get to the good stuff. I've gotten a lot of requests about my electronic setup in this base, and I'm going to go over it now for you. The pickups are stock Dingwall NG3 pickups. I haven't done anything with the pickups or adjusted the series slash parallel configuration in any way. What I have done is replaced the four-way rotary switch with a six-way rotary from Fret Nation. This does require a little bit of soldering and a little bit of soldering know-how, so if you're not comfortable doing that, I definitely recommend getting a professional. With the rotary switch, three pickups go in, and what you get on the output is a black and white wire. You have your hot and your ground, and that's going to go into our John East MMSR Stingray preamp. This is the three knob version, so we have a stacked bass and treble control, as well as a stacked mid and mid frequency control, and then a solo volume control. This setup works great because it's made for a single pickup bass, and we're essentially getting one output out of the rotary switch, so it's treating it as a single pickup. It kind of works out. The last bit on here is the passive tone control module right at the end. This is an add-on module from ACG slash John East. You can purchase these from Best Bass Gear, though last I checked they're out of stock. However, I'm going to link everything that I've used down in the description below. Now in regards to how everything connects, it's fairly simple. The John East preamp is a standalone unit. It has its own volume control as well as its own output jack. Now it is recommended that you shield your pickup and your control cavities with copper uh, from the John East manual. They definitely recommend a full shielding job with copper. So I did that and then it's a little bit of soldering for your grounds and you're good to go. Here's a little diagram basically showing what I did. I'm gonna provide that in the description below. If you have any questions, join our Discord channel. That's also linked in the description below. It's essentially a small chat room. There's a lot of people on there, and if you have any questions in regards to how something like this works, definitely join and ask, and I know that myself or one of the people on there will definitely help you out. Now the last bit, I have a battery kill switch. It just kills the battery connection. Just for fun, I just wanted to do something in the, with the switch and I couldn't think of anything else. Unfortunately, I couldn't wire up a bypass because of the way the MMSR is set up and it's kind of a pain in the butt to desolder some of the pots on there. It's pretty precise stuff, so I really didn't want to mess with the John East preamp that much. That being said, everything that you see here is working in absolute full capacity and it sounds great. Let me show you. You all know what you need to do. Go ahead and pinch that like button so my hand will turn back to normal. Thanks. string. 
So what you've heard thus far is the pickup configuration number six, all the way this way. We're soloing the bridge pickup. With the six-way rotary switch, we have retained the four stock configurations, which are the bridge pickup soloed, the rear two pickups in series, the front pickup and the rear pickup in parallel, and the front pickup soloed. What we've added is the back two pickups in parallel, as well as all three pickups together in D-Rock mode. So I believe that is the back two pickups in parallel in series with the front pickup. It's a lot. I will go over all the different configurations and we'll be messing with this preamp with each and every one of them, so don't you worry. We're gonna start off with position six all the way in the back and that is the bridge pickup soloed. In my opinion, with this preamp that isn't really coloring things as heavy as the dark glass was and it gives a more vintage flavor, this nails the jazz bass bridge pickup sound. <laughs> So what you've heard is the preamp centered. Let's mess around with this a little bit because this is such a flexible preamp and we have the passive tone control. That was up at 100% as well. Let's take that down to 50%. <laughs> and all the way down. Very cool. I'm gonna turn the tone back up all the way and let's actually mess with the active portion of the preamp. We have a three band EQ with a mid frequency control. Let's take the mids down all the way boost the bass and the treble around, I want to say 50%. Let's see what this sounds like. Now, this is an interesting preamp because you have two selections for the mid-frequency range targets. You have 100 to 1000 hertz and 200 to 2000 hertz. We have the latter selected at 200 to 2000 hertz. Uh, quite the range. And we have the frequency control turned down all the way right now. Let's mess with it a little bit. <laughs> Very cool, very cool. Uh, now let's uh, turn the mids back up to center, leaving the treble and bass boosted, and I'm gonna engage bright mode. That's right, there is another gadget built into this preamp, and when you pull the treble control on this bass and treble stack, you engage bright mode, which is a boost at around, I think, 10,000 hertz. Pretty high up there, but gives you a little extra sizzle. Here's what that sounds like with the treble boosted around 50%, the bass boosted around 50%, and the mid control, that's the treble, and the mid control at center. 
spend all day just on this one setting, but we must move on to the next configuration. I'm going to center the preamp. Uh, here it is. Let's center that. Make sure the tone's up all the way, and we are going to move on to the next position. So position five is the back two pickups in parallel. Similar to what a true Stingray configuration is, though they refer to the back two pickups in series as Stingray mode. Uh, but let's listen to this first. Here is the back two pickups in parallel with the EQ centered and the tone at 100%. <laughs> Very nice. You definitely get some grit and bite like you would on a Stingray. But the pickups being neodymium magnets in a P configuration, each one is a kind of P underneath the soap bar, uh, give you a different flavor and a bit of a dingwall signature zing that you really can't find in any other pickup. I like the sound a lot. Let's mess with this EQ now. Uh, forget the tone controls. Stingray's never had tone controls. Uh, <laughs> I'm going to boost the bass and the treble around 50%, leaving the mids centered. And now let's engage the bright mode. This is fun. This is a lot of fun. Now let's engage a mid cut. We'll do a mid boost too on this one. Here's the mids cut all the way and let's play with this frequency control. Okay, that was with the mids cut. Let's boost the mids all the way and see what happens. Let's start with the frequency range way down and we'll work our way up once more. With the bright mode enabled, it almost sounds like a ding wall with the dark glass. But 
it can do the classic tones too, and I really dig that. So let's center the preamp once more, disengage the bright mode. We'll bring our bass and treble down to center, our mids up to center, or down to center, whatever. And we will engage the next pickup mode. Now this is a spicy one. This is the back two pickups in series. So you get a lot of output here. So that's the thing, I don't think that the back two pickups in series sound as Stingray-ish as the back two pickups in parallel with the treble boost and the uh, bass boost. I just thought that nailed the Stingray tone like on the spot. It sounds a bit less Stingray-ish and a bit more, I'm not going to say generic, but it sounds more, I guess there's less definition in the treble range and it's a bit more wall of sound versus that crisp Stingray sound. So very good sounding combination nonetheless, this series mode with the back two pickups engaged. <laughs> Let's do a uh, mid scoop. Let's start with that. I'm going to boost the bass and treble to around 50%. <laughs> Okay, so that's probably one of my least favorite pickup combinations, only because the other ones are just so good with this preamp. Let's move on to the next setting. This is jazz bass mode, and that is the front pickup and the back pickup paired in parallel, just like a jazz bass. So here's what that sounds like with the EQ centered and the tone at 100%. <laughs> It doesn't sound exactly like a jazz bass, it's essentially like a double P, but it's an approximation. And with this EQ, we can definitely kind of shape it to get there a little bit. <laughs> So I just boosted the treble alone to about 50%, leaving the bass centered, and I pulled the treble knob to engage the bright mode. Now let's uh, give it a little bit of a mid scoop. I'm going to cut the mids about 50%. <laughs> <laughs> oh, 
I, I love this base. I love it. I just love it. The neck is just awesome. These bases are absolutely worth it. And I know they're made in China and they're like over $2,000 They're like $2,500 for the five string with the three pickups, but you get what you pay for here. And I don't think that Sheldon is pulling a fast one on anybody. These are high quality instruments that sound and play great. And I bet that Sheldon is using a reputable shop overseas. Now let's take the tone to about 50%, just for fun. And the tone all the way down. Very cool. I like that a lot. And we are going to move on to probably my favorite pickup configuration on this bass. Position number two, and that is the neck pickup soloed. This is P bass mode, and I think it nails it. Yeah, this just nails the P-Bass vibe. And what's extra nice about this configuration is you can get all sorts of iconic P-Bass tones. And even beyond that, you can get some major clank and growl out of this. Let's engage bright mode boost the treble, uh, let's boost it all the way. And we're going to bring our mids up 50% boost as well. And we're going to boost our high mids. Listen to that clank, Ugh, it's so good. But we can also have a more sensitive tone, a more sensible tone with uh, a mid scoop. Let's scoop the mids. We're gonna scoop the high mids, or keep it mostly in the middle there, uh, and boost the bass and the treble just about 50%. And we can even take the tone down and get like a fat, fat, like toned down vintage style, like almost flatty kind of tone. And finally, we're gonna move on to position number one. I'm gonna center the preamp, turn the tone up all the way, and we have engaged D-Rock mode. All three pickups engaged. You cannot get this in the stock NG3. You need to have either a D-Rock rotary switch or the Fret Nation six-way rotary, which works really well. Now, the only way I can describe D-Rock mode with all three pickups engaged is a wall of sound. Check it out. Ha <laughs> ha 
<laughs> yeah, it's almost like a Gibson-y kind of mud buckery tone, but not. It's very interesting. I guess, you know, D-Rock is like a Thunderbird and it's trying to get that like kind of Gibson-y tone with a Dingwall flavor. Uh, you can definitely get that here as well. Let's uh, boost the bass a little bit and boost the treble. Pull our bright mode switch, see what happens, leaving the mid-centered for now. take the bass boost down to center. Uh, we're just going to center the bass. Uh, let's boost the treble all the way. <laughs> That's a fat meaty tone. I like that a lot. Let's do a mid scoop with that now. Uh, start with the low mids and work our way up. So again, if you are looking to do this to your own dingwall, make sure you're handy with a soldering iron. And I'm going to link all the parts that I used down in the description below. Keep in mind, I also did a full shielding job in the pickup cavity and the control cavity. And I linked both shields with a wire and I soldered both ends to each respective cavity. Make sure you do that and then make sure you connect your bridge ground as well as the green wire that's coming off of the John East preamp that's meant to go to the, uh, the shield. Solder that to the shield as well and you're going to be golden. This thing is going to run extra quiet. It's going to sound great in all the different configurations and you can nail vintage tones, modern tones, everything in between. I absolutely adore this bass and it's an absolute jack of all trades. Let me know which was your favorite tone configuration in the comments down below. Well, that's it for this video. Thanks for watching, everyone. Be sure to like, subscribe, and join our Discord channel, and leave a comment down below. Let me know what you think about my modified Dingwall NG3. And as always, until we groove again. <laughs>